Welcome to The Gathering, stories and narrations from the Dark Somnium community. This story includes narrations by the Dark Somnium, Harbinger X, and Todd McKenzie, titled The Reason I Quit the Police. This post has been altered to conceal the names of people and locations involved. I've been a member of the new South Wales Police Force for 33 years, and what I witnessed on this night was something I know I will never get rid of out of my mind and will most likely be with me until the day I die. It was about 2.25 a.m. on a quiet Thursday evening. And my shift was ending at 3 a.m., which meant I was in a good mood as the shift had been relatively easy. That was until I was assigned a job to investigate reports of screaming and distressed cries of help from a property surrounded by bushland. Now, the calls to investigate this property were frequent, and I assumed it would go how it always did. I would arrive with my flashing blue and red lights with no sirens and drive down the driveway to witness a rather large house surrounded by dense bush and trees. No lights would be visible as the house was unoccupied due to the owners going missing after a few years early. I told my partner, Matthew, that we had been called to the house again. All right, let's go there, find nothing, and report back, he said, grabbing his hat and gulping down the last of his lukewarm tea. Fast forward 20 minutes to 2.45 a.m., and we arrived at the gates which separated the already hidden house from the road. We slowly drove down the long driveway, observing the trees on either side of us to ensure all was calm. It was silent. There was no action of any sort on the driveway, and we found nothing at the house. At least, that's what we thought would happen. On this night, there was an eerie feeling creeping up on us as we drew closer to the house. Matthew was ready to radio our commanding officer the news that nothing was amiss until we arrived at the other side of the driveway. The house stood there, silent and proud, shrouded as always, yet Unlike the other jobs here, there was a light on in the living room. We ensured our tasers were ready to go in the event of an aggressive intruder and got out of the police car, leaving the headlights the on still and pointed at the house. And no windows appear to be damaged. Matthew whispered, eyeing the single light in the living room. We simultaneously approached the front door and knocked with a heavy thud. Nothing. We knocked a second time, hoping the occupants didn't hear the first knock. And there was still nothing. This is where it gets creepy. Upon knocking for a third time, Matthew went stiff as a statue and then began shaking. What? What can you see? I stopped. I could feel goosebumps. Peering out a window from the second floor was a person. A woman wearing a white gown was staring down at us. We couldn't see her clearly as the window was foggy, but we knew it was a woman aged around 21. Matthew was petrified, and I can't blame him for being so. I called out to the woman and demanded she open the front door. She stared for a few more moments and turned around and walked off. We could hear footsteps coming down the rickety staircase on the other side of the door and braced ourselves to stand face to face with the woman. Then it all went silent as it once was. Matthew notified the commander that there was a possible intruder and we needed an extra car as support. Before the commander answered, an almighty bang ricocheted through the house. It sounded like a gunshot, so Matthew and I hightailed it back to the car and took cover behind it against the boot. Matthew turned his head to me after looking back at the house as a few more bangs followed. I was texting my wife that there were gunshots, and I loved her. Paul, Paul, you need to look now, Matthew said to me. Fear was amplified through his voice as he said this. I slowly peeked around the side of the car and almost shrieked at what I saw. The living room light was off, but now the entire second floor was illuminated by a green light, a bright green light. We studied it, slowly calming ourselves and reassuring one another that backup was coming. The banging stopped, and when we were ready, we ventured very slowly back towards the house, almost crawling. As we got to the front porch, we heard another sound, not a footstep or a loud bang. This sound was a blood-curdling scream that has stuck with me to this day. We couldn't wait any longer for backup. We breached the front door, guns drawn, and followed the source of the screaming together. We dare not split up in a place like this. Not tonight. We went upstairs ever so slowly, not blinking and hyper-vigilant of our surroundings. The green light was coming from the room from where we saw the woman. As I neared the door, Matthew bumped a base, and it fell with a loud crack. 
The second it hit the ground, we heard a male voice yelling to us. Hey! Hey, what are you doing here? He yelled. My name is Senior Constable Cooper of Juneau Police. Show yourself! I yelled firmly. You have no idea what you've stumbled across, Senior Constable. The man said, thumping something, prompting more screams. I said nothing and readied myself for the other side. I gave the door one hard kick and it came tumbling down. Inside was a circle of blood, 50 to 20 green candles, and a white gown that looked brand new. There was no sign of anyone in the room at the time. We were certain the screams and the talking came from here. What is this? I said, turning to face Matthew. But Matthew was nowhere to be seen. Matthew! I called a dozen times to no avail. I could hear the sirens in the distance, and as I looked out the window, I could see the distinct red and blue flashing lights through the trees. Backup was here, but Matthew was not. For the next 35 minutes, I searched the house from top to bottom for Matthew with the other three officers that had just arrived. I ventured down into the cellar under the kitchen and found something that haunts me to this day. Matthew's credentials, identifying him as a member of the New South Wales Police, as well as his gun and three bloody fingers, placed neatly on the ground. I screamed at the top of my lungs for the other officers to come to me and call for forensics and virtually everyone available at the time. By the time I got home, it was 5.30 a.m. and the sun was rising. Matthew was never seen again, nor did forensics find any trace of him. The fingers found were identified as his, two of them were. Third was unknown and remains unknown to this day. It took me 45 minutes after getting home to decide to resign effective immediately. It has been 10 years since that night to this day, November 21st. And I still hear the screams of that woman and the distinct voice that warned me in that house. Please, if you ever hear screaming in the middle of the night, call the proper law enforcement. Don't venture by yourself to investigate.